Hi. How you doing? Good. I'm going to turn off my heater while we do this so we don't hear it. A little bit Fair of enough. history about you real quick. Uh, for those that aren't aware of who you are, you started game design roughly in 2000 with Wizards of the Coast with Star Wars, correct? That was my first major design. Yeah, I actually had been working for uh, Dragon Magazine as a just a fan writing articles since about 1997. And I did some other freelance stuff. But my big break was when I got hired by Wizards of the Coast to work on the Star Wars RPG. And then from there, you kind of went into freelancing for a while and ended up with uh, Other Worlds Creations? Yeah, uh, Other Worlds Creations, which was run by Stan, uh, with an exclamation point, and Hiram Savage, which at that point was operating as Super Genius Games. Uh, I wrote a Call of Cthulhu adventure for them, and then when the Pathfinder role-playing game came along, uh, I approached them and I said, hey, I've got some stuff I think... I could write for this, but I'm not an editor, I am not a producer, I am not a layout person, and those are skills I've seen you all apply excellently to my writing already. What if we got together and we started to produce some Pathfinder RPG content? And uh, that began, began a run of one product a week, every week, for four years. And since then, you've done all kinds of stuff. More Star Wars, lots of Pathfinder, obviously. Uh, EverQuest, the Black Company role-playing game, and Wheel of Time, which I didn't realize you were involved with at all, actually. Yeah, Wheel of Time was also back in 2000. Uh, that was at Wizards of the Coast. Um, officially, the Star Wars team was supposed to become the Star Wars, or the Wizards of the Coast licensed product team. So we were going to be doing a whole bunch of things, and... Most of those never developed, right? Uh, I play tested for a Lord of the Rings version of D20 that Wizards of the Coast was working on way back then that never materialized. Uh, we were looking at having a Star Trek license, which never materialized, and we worked on uh, two Wheel of Time products. Wow. I didn't know all of that. And now you're home. Are you still... Where is your current working home? Are you more of a freelancer, or are you actually working for a company? So I am a full-time, on-staff, in-the-office developer for Paizo now uh, for almost a year. I have been doing freelance for them for a long time, obviously, but last year uh, I got the phone call where Wes Schneider, the editor-in-chief, said, hey, we have a position that's open. Uh, are you actually interested in moving back to Seattle? And I had lived in Seattle from 2000 to 2001 when I worked for the Coast. I got caught in one of Watsi's perennial layoffs, and... At the time, I was not a well-known freelancer, right? I'd freelanced for a few years. I'd done one product launching third edition. My wife and I sat down and we looked at freelance income and the cost of living in Seattle, uh, and we moved back home to Oklahoma. So I had freelanced from Oklahoma for 15 years, 14, I guess, and done a lot of work. That Wes and the other people at Paizo knew me very well, but I was not yet on staff. Uh, it is worth noting that I am also the Pathfinder developer for Green Ronin, which is done uh, out of your house type of situation. That's more of a freelance setup, but it's a regular freelance. So I work full time for Paizo. I work as a developer for Green Ronin, and I am the publisher and one of the main writers of Rogue Genius Games, which we started after Super Genius bought us out. I didn't realize that Green Ronin was like that. I thought they were like a... Wow. I didn't realize they were more freelance like that. I uh, think Green Ronin is a, a solid company. Um, it's one of the biggest... Uh, doesn't have a, a huge building of its own setups. But a lot of what we do, right, is sitting in front of our computer screen and typing. And as we're proving right now, it's pretty easy to talk to people with modern technology. So rather than have a specific office set up, they let people work from their homes and work their own hours, and that lets them get the people they want rather than the people they want who can all drive to the same building. We do have a get-together every year, uh, normally in October, so that we spend some time making plans for the next year and such. But yeah, I mean, Chris has an office, and they have a very professional setup, but they've carefully set the company up so they don't have to pay overhead on a building and a warehouse and and things of that nature. Um, and it's one of the things that allows them to be quite nimble. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why Green Ronin has uh, the Freeport line. It's got the Dragon Age line. 
Uh, it has a, a, the Song of Ice and Fire. It's got mutants and masterminds. It has icons. Um, because they can take the people that they think are the perfect people for those jobs, and it doesn't matter where you live, and say, hey, we'd like you to be the developer for this line, get yourself some freelancers to, to help write it. Uh, I think it's a real advantage for Green Ronin and the way they operate. Yeah, it is. And, I mean, they've managed to put out some quite impressive products. Yeah, I, I, uh, I worked with Chris Pramus at Wizards of the Coast back in 2000, 2001. Um, and when I went freelance, of course, that was at the dawn of the D20 boom. Um, so I wrote a lot of material for Green Ronin. Uh, and that that caused me to be able to build a relationship with them so that when they came back and they said, we want to do Freeport, we want to do it again for Pathfinder, we want to do the biggest book we've ever done. And it's a 544 page book. Um, they, they asked me if I would come be the developer for the Pathfinder line, and I, I was very excited to get to do that for Green Renee. That That's a feat, 540 some pages. It's, it's a old. chunk, right? Um, it takes pretty much all the material we've had for Freeport before. Uh, it has a lot of new rules content, uh, so much in fact that we put out a player's guide so that if if you want to run a Freeport campaign, right, you want that great big hardback book. If you're just a fan of, of Freeport and you want that piece of, of its background and history, you want that great big book. If your GM is running a game and all you want is, hey, I, I want to be able to make a freebooter character and I want to understand the insanity rules and I want to look at the its set of firearms and feats and stuff, there's a player's guide PDF you can pick up where you can say, okay, here's the material I need. It's got a primer on the city rather than going into detail with absolutely everyone. Uh, it's kind of the, the perfect player companion for that setting, and it's got all of the player-focused rules content, as well as enough material about what is Freeport and who's in charge and what are the, the various sections of the city like that you can get a feel for it without having to absorb this huge tome. Uh, 